In this presentation, we will enter a transaction for a sales return. We have our data up here on the left side. We're going to enter this information into the general journal and then post it to our worksheet here. Not posting it to the general ledger, but posting it to a simple worksheet that will show us immediately the transactions that will go on. A worksheet that is designed well for a small number of transactions where we will have a beginning balance the entries that we will enter, and then the ending balance showing us the result of the transaction. Worksheet is formatted in terms of the assets in green, liabilities in orange, equity in light blue, and revenue and expenses in dark blue. We have both debit and credits represented in terms of a debit and credit column in the general journal, as well as credits will be represented with bracketed or negative numbers. However, in the trial balance, we're going to represent the debits and credits in order to save time and simplify the formulas to have debits as positive numbers and credits as the negative numbers. The check figure to see that we are in balance is the zero, adding up debits and credits, debits minus credits equaling zero. We then have the net income calculated here. We got the sales 107, the cost of goods sold. We are limiting the accounts to just those that we will be working with here so that we can see the results in terms of net income and account types. Here is our information on the left side. We're talking about a sales return and we're going to have this is the sales price and this is the cost that we originally had. So what we're doing here is we're saying that there was a sale that happened and the inventory was returned. And therefore, what are we going to do? How are we going to deal with this return of the inventory? Now to do this, we can start thinking through what type of accounts will be affected if the inventory gets returned. Well, we, we know that we're going to increase inventory. We got it back unless it's damaged, of course. And then, uh, you know, we could start thinking through it in that format. But since this is a more unusual transaction and it's closely related to the sales transaction, probably easiest to think about the sale and then reverse it. So even if we didn't have the numbers like we have here, uh, you want to basically go through, or I suggest the process of going through, first thinking about what did the sale look like, and then reversing it. So remember, when we sell inventory, there's two transactions that we can think of it as, meaning we can have the transaction related to the sale, similar to a service company, similar to a company that doesn't have inventory, but recording a sale for work done. And then we have the second component dealing with inventory and the related expense, of using that inventory to generate revenue cost of goods sold so if we think about those we're going to put that into our worksheet down here and just write that down and then we can easily look at it and see what we need to do in order to do the reversing of that in order to deal with the return that we have so first of all if, uh, when we make the sale if we made it on account we didn't get cash we're going to say it went into accounts receivable accounts receivable has a debit balance we're going to make it to go up by doing the same thing in our worksheet uh, we're not going to make it go up here for the return. I'm just saying what happened when we made the original uh, the original sale. Well, we know accounts receivable went up, so I'm going to put that in our worksheet. It's down here. We're going to say, and so I'm just copying this. I'm just right-clicking, copy. We're going to put that in the worksheet, right-click and paste. We're going to make a mock journal entry just to uh, then reverse it for the seven or 980. So we'll put 980. Then we'll credit something for 980. We could put a negative, negative 980 here, or uh, I'm going to use a formula instead of equals, a negative of this number. Take that number and flip the sign. So there's our 980 credit. And then the other side of it is going to be what went to sales, our revenue account. So uh, if it was a service company, it'd be fees earned. If it's a merchandising company, typically called sales, has a credit balance. It only goes up in the credit direction. We will then credit it. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste that down here. Right click and paste it. One, two, three. Gonna, we could indent it by going to the home tab, alignment, increase indent, or just double clicking and hitting the space bar three times. Next, we're going to have the fact the inventory must have gone down when we made the original sale. That's merchandise inventory. This must have gone down. So it has a debit balance to make it go down. We do the opposite thing to it, a credit. So I'm going to copy merchandise inventory, right click and copy. Scroll back down, we'll skip a line, skip another line to put it on the bottom. We're going to put it here. I'm in G23 and sell G23, right click and paste, one, two, three. 
And then we're gonna put that in the credit column, the amount 700. So in the credit column, I'm gonna put a negative 700. That'll put the brackets around it. I'm gonna then indent this cell, go into the home tab, alignment, increase and denting. Then we know we're gonna have some type of debit for 700. We can type in uh, just 700 or use a formula of negative of that number. Take that number, flip the sign, it gives us a positive 700. Then we just need to know what that account will be and uh, it will be the expense. It's gonna be the cost of goods sold. So we're gonna say cost of goods sold is an expense. It goes up in the debit direction. We would have expensed it when we recorded this because uh, we used the inventory in order to help generate revenue. So we'll copy that. I'm gonna put that down here in G22, right click and paste one, two, three. So there's our journal entry that we would have. So these are our two journal entries. And in essence, if they returned the merchandise, we need to reverse this. So we could do this step by step. Now note it's a little confusing when we reverse it because if we wanna be in alignment with having the debits on top and the credits on bottom, we're gonna reverse the order. In other words, I could go up here and put um, accounts receivable and then have it in the credit side to mirror what we have here, but we would rather put accounts receivable on the bottom. So if I was gonna copy this first one, for example, I'm gonna say accounts receivable, copy that, we're gonna reverse it by putting it on the bottom, right click and paste one, two, three. We then indent it, home tab, alignment, increase indenting, and it's gonna be for the sales price. And I'm gonna put a negative of 980. Now that of course makes sense because if they returned the merchandise, if they had paid for it, they would expect money back, <laughs> but they didn't pay for it. They, uh, we still had it on a credit. That's gonna be typically the situation in most type of book problems. So we're not gonna give cash back. What we're gonna do instead is say, I uh, will reduce the amount that we owe you. We'll credit your account. See, we're gonna credit the account there and that'll reduce the amount we're going to debit something of course and then that debit if we look here would be a reversal of sales meaning sales would be debited to make it to go down now this is the minor exception we have with this so this is the thing we have to remember when we go through this process and basically i, re I recommend remembering it like this sales doesn't go down it only goes up in the credit direction almost never goes down until we close it out at the end of the time period. What we do instead is we add a contra account and the contra account is not, it acts like an expense, meaning it goes up in the debit direction and it brings down uh, net income. However, it's not really an expense. It's a contra sales account. It's an account that is going to be uh, recorded in the revenue section of the income statement and to record net sales, not net income, net sales. So instead of bringing this down, we're, we're going to put the debit here. So we're going to increase this account, a contra sales account, which is in essence bringing down sales or net sales in any case. So we're going to copy this, right click and copy this and paste it up top, right click and paste one, two, three. So that's the one exception we'll have there. Then we can just reverse the second piece. Inventory is going to be reversed. I would think of it first because it often makes most sense uh, when we think of returning of inventory. We got more inventory back if it was returned, therefore the inventory should go up. It has a debit balance. We're gonna make it go up by doing the same thing to it, another debit. So we'll copy the merchandise inventory. I'm gonna put it up top in C8, right click and paste one, two, three. And the amount will be for 700, the cost. So it's the cost. Then we're gonna have a credit of 700. I'm gonna do that with a negative of this number and enter. And then we just need to know what that account will be. And of course it is cost of goods sold. This is really the most confusing component and that's why I really recommend doing this first, writing down the sales transaction and then reversing it. It's confusing for a few different reasons. One is the cost of goods sold. I'm gonna copy this and put it on the bottom. Right click, paste one, two, three and C9. Then go to the home tab, alignment, increase and denting. Now cost of goods sold oftentimes is, is just in a confusing account for a lot of students. It's an expense, but it doesn't deal with spending cash, which often a lot of expenses uh, deal with. And therefore it doesn't seem possibly like a normal expense maybe, but it, it is an expense because we're consuming something, merchandise, in order to help us uh, generate revenue. It's also unusual because we're decreasing the expense. We're crediting an expense 
which almost never happens. So the rules, basically expenses, as well as sales only go up. Sales go up with a credit, expenses go up with a debit. This is the exception and exception to this rule and that's why it should be a bit confusing. We, we make a, a workaround in the sales side note by making this Contra account, but we don't make a Contra cost of goods sold account, we just reduce the cost of goods sold account. So keep that in mind. If we post this out then, we're gonna go straight down. We're gonna say sales returns and allowances. That's gonna be right here. We are in I-11, I'm gonna say equals, point to the sales returns and allowances. It'll go from zero up in the debit direction to 980. And that, of course, goes up here. It's a contra revenue account, and that puts us out of balance, brings net income down. Net income started here, we brought it down to here. Then uh, we're gonna post the other side of accounts receivable. So that's gonna be here in I-6. We're gonna say that equals and point to that 980. This is a debit, that's a credit. It's gonna bring this 10,200 down by 980 to 9,220. Then we're gonna post the second half. Here's the merchandise inventory. Uh, here's the merchandise inventory here. It's going up. We're gonna be in I-7. I-7, we'll say equals point to that 700. This 21,000, uh, 27,000 debit will go up in the debit direction, 700 to 27,700, putting us out of balance, no effect on net income yet, until we go to the cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold here, cost of goods sold here. We're gonna be in I-13, within I-13, we will say equals, pointing to that 700 credit, this is a debit of 5,000. It's going to go by down by 700 in the credit to 4,300. That puts us back in balance and that uh, affects the net income. So the net effect on net income is, is this is going to be decreasing net income. The Contra account, it's kind of acting like an expense, but it's really a Contra sales account is going up. And then the cost of goods sold an expense account is going down. Again, spend some time with this transaction because these should look funny and it's something that's unusual. Uh, the return's not a transaction we see all the time and therefore it's, it's one that uh, you want to spend some time with and I think the best way to do that is to record this transaction a few times and then reverse it. And note that this transaction, even after a few times of recording it, is still confusing in and of itself because there's two components to it, because there's a sale component and there's a merchandise or cost of goods sold component.